Alrighty, folks. In this video, I'm going to solve a common problem which you'll have with NAN if you've got it installed locally on your little personal computer, and that is webhooks. When it comes to communicating with stuff like Telegram or setting up uh, Telegram triggers, if you've got to deal with anything to do with Google, so if you're trying to use any of the Google nodes, the Gmail nodes, the calendar nodes, that's also going to cause you problems. And I'll give a quick demo of what happens. This is a default installation of NAN. And you can see it's on localhost here. So if I try and set up a Telegram node, and I'll just do an on message here, I've already got the account linked up there. You will just create an account in Telegram. It's pretty standard stuff, creating Telegram bots. Link that up, and then when we come to test it, we're gonna have an issue. And this is going to be a common issue with a lot of nodes. And this is the fact that we don't have a HTTP callback URL. If we actually look at the webhook here, you can see our URL here. If we ever wanted to have any services communicate with this NAN instance, this is just not going to work. Uh, the way you would sort of get around this is you would try and punch some ports through and expose your IP and stuff to the internet. That's, that's not what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to replace this with an actual domain name and it's going to be fully secured. It's going to have TLS behind it and it's going to be backed by Cloudflare. So you will need for this a domain name. This is the only part that's actually going to cost money, but they are stupidly cheap. We're going to go ahead and just purchase one of them so you can see the process. Then we'll go into Cloudflare, create an account, get the domain name set up within Cloudflare and I'll go through all that. And then from there, we're going to set up a tunnel and then show how to configure NAN with that new URL. Okay, so the first step is if you've already got a domain name, then obviously you don't need to buy one. I'm gonna use names cheap here to just quickly buy a domain and I'll show you how cheap they are. I'm just gonna buy my awesome domain dot online. Search for that. There we go, 74p, oh, it's actually gonna to cost two, two pounds here and 18, 18p. Let's go ahead, buy that. And it is mine. We own that domain, that costs two bucks. The rest of this is not gonna cost a single penny. So the next step we need to do is head over to Cloudflare. I have that here. I'm just gonna sign in with uh, with Google. And from there, you'll be presented with this page. This is where we're gonna add the domain that we just brought. So I'm gonna select manually enter DNS records and I'm gonna put my awesome domain dot online that is what we just brought my awesome domain dot online beautiful I'm gonna click next oh I spelled that wrong okay let's try that again uh, <laughs> click next and I spelled it wrong again online there we go third time's the charm Brilliant, now this is gonna ask you what kind of plan you wanna pick. Uh, we're gonna select the bottom one, which is free. It's not gonna cost anything. Beautiful, we're gonna to continue to activation. We're gonna just confirm that. Now, what we need to do here, wherever you've got your domain name hosted, you need to go and update the DNS records. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go back over to my domains here. And I'm already in this domain settings and I'm coming over to the name servers. By default with names cheap, it's gonna be basic DNS. We're gonna put custom in there. I'm just gonna paste that one there. Come back to Cloudflare, grab this second one, paste that in there and then click save. This is basically saying with this domain, Cloudflare is gonna manage it for us. If you've already got a domain set up uh, and you've already got custom DNS records and stuff, 
uh, I wouldn't just repoint it all because it's going to break everything. But if you've got all them set up, you probably know what you're doing. So we've done that. Then we click continue. This is fine. Check name servers. And this is going to take, this could take five minutes. This could take 10 minutes. If I just come to my overview here, there we go. So you can see it says invalid name service. This is because they haven't updated yet. They haven't propagated. This will take a little bit of time. So I will pause it here and come back when it's done. Okay, and that's all done. That took uh, around about five minutes. It didn't take too long at all. Now it's active. So the next stage is to go to this zero trust. So we're going to select that. Now at this point, you're probably going to be presented with a screen telling you to sign up for a package. There is a free package there. Go ahead and select that. Fill in the details. It's going to want a payment on file, which is absolutely fine. It's not going to charge you a penny. And then you'll be presented with this screen. Once you're presented with this screen, then head over to networks, come over to tunnels. And this is where we're going to create our first tunnel. So we'll click add tunnel. We'll come over to Cloudflare. We'll select this Cloudflare. You can name this whatever you want. My network. Whatever makes sense to you, whatever you're using it for. It's going to ask to select an environment. I'm going to select Docker here because Docker is just uh, the easiest thing ever. And I'm going to come over to my Docker container. So I've copied this. I'm going to come over to the Docker container here. I'm going to paste this in and I am going to make one little adjustment here. Because if I run this, I'm going to have to come out of this terminal because it's going to just stay there. If I put I just have to run, if I do dash D, that's going to run it in a sort of detached mode in the background. And then I can put more, you know, I can still use this terminal in that sense. So you'll need this Cloudflare. This is how Cloudflare sort of talks from your computer to Cloudflare. Once we've done that, it will say connected here, lovely jubbly. And then this is where we set up the subdomain. So in this instance, I'm gonna put NAN. I'm gonna select the domain name. I'm gonna select the service type. So this is where it's being pointed to on our machine. In because I'm running this on Docker, I'm gonna put the Docker's internal address. So it's gonna be host dot docker dot internal and then the ip address five six seven eight which if we come over to docker that's the ip there to nan and that's it we click save dns record successfully added technically that's all up and running we can come over if i just leave that if i just make a new tab here and go nan dot my awesome domain you can see i've already gone to it there there we go you can access this outside your network we haven't had to worry about ports or any weirdness super super straightforward with cloudflare now we still need to add this as a webhook in nan because it's still going to want to use if i just create a new workflow here and click webhook this is still going to want to use this, right? And it's the same with the Telegram. We're still going to have issues with Telegram trying to trying to get that all working. So the way we deal with that, if we come back to Docker, I'm just going to shut this down and delete this instance of NAN. I'm going to come to a document here. Now, this was the first command I ran initially to get that instance that I just removed. Now, the reason I can just remove it and then fire it back up and I'm still going to have all my login credentials and all of that is because I've set a path on my machine here. So this means I can remove the Docker. I can add any extra parameters I need to and re relaunch it again. And it's going to pull them same settings as such, you know, so I'm not going to lose any workflows or anything like that. But the only difference here is we've got this webhook URL environment field. And you can see I've already got nan.myawesomedomain.online. So I'm going to copy that now. Copy that. Paste that in. Uh, it says so it's up and running. Yep, so that's just firing up now. That's just going to take a second. There we go. And now it's accessible. There you go. So that's completely accessible online. This is secured 
you can see here HTTPS so Cloudflare is taking care of all of that and now if we create a workflow and we want to use telegram so we'll just do an on message this is exactly what we did before right so I've already got my account there we'll click test and now it's just waiting like I do actually send a message from telegram just saying hi you can see that comes through no issues at all and that's because we've secured this the webhook now now we've deployed it with an actual HTTPS domain name telegram isn't gonna isn't gonna scream and shout telegram will want a secured URL same with Gmail all right so you want to get your Gmail up and running when it comes to actually setting up your credentials and adding the credentials and I'm not going to go through this whole process but one of the things you'll need is an actual domain for it to call back on right and if this is just a local host domain that's not going to work well now this has solved your problem because now you've got a secure domain callback here uh, and Google's not going to have an issue with that and that's pretty much it and this is going to solve a few problems you know you've seen a lot of people create these little AI assistant bots which are really cool and they use telegram and if you've tried setting this up locally uh, you would have ran into the issue of non HTTP which is what I ran into and I'm like okay that's a that's a pain this solves that super super easy you can keep adding more you know if you've got other services you want to expose that is super easy so I'll just do a quick demo showing that so if I come over to docker here I'm gonna deploy uh, some software here. I'm going to deploy Coco Coco Row TTS. So I'm just going to copy a command here. So this is a Docker Docker command, and this is just going to fire up Coco Row TTS. So you can see it's 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 launched here, and it's on port eight 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 zero. But this is only accessible from our computer right unless we start opening up ports and stuff like that we can't access this away from our computer it's only going to be available on our local network to add that into cloudflare if we come back over to cloudflare and this is stupidly easy and this can be anything on your computer if you've got any kind of any other software running that's got ports and you want to expose it this is the way that you can do it and it's secure so we'll come back over we'll, we're back in our tunnels here I'm gonna select my network I'm gonna select edit I'm gonna to go to public host name here and I'm gonna add a new one and in this instance I'm gonna put TTS my awesome domain HTTP and I'm gonna put in this case because I'm using Docker, I'm gonna put the Docker's internal address but if you was running a python script right away from docker and it was just running on localhost 123 then this is what you would put you would put localhost then the port 123 or right whatever whatever it would be and that would that would work absolutely fine but this is docker so i'm going to put the docker internal address in there so it's going to be host docker dot internal and then the port number 8880 and that is it and we can copy this link now so it's going to say not found because this is taking us to the root URL with uh, Kokoro TTS we need to just do forward slash web and then we can access it and there you go we've just exposed another application that we've got right it is really that simple so hopefully that's been useful this is what they don't tell you when it comes to setting up these things and you wouldn't know unless you go down the rabbit hole and find out but i think this is quite possibly the easiest way if you're running something like DigitalOcean or a bps they'll normally give you a secured ip so you won't necessarily need to worry about this but when it comes to local installations you're gonna need to worry about the the tls the secured side of things so this i found is the easiest way to do it Anyway, that's about it. I hope that was helpful.